Close your eyes and look at your mind. Where is it leaning right now? Is it leading to thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, things you like to think about, things that get you upset? If the mind leans like that, it's going to fall over. So you want to set it straight right here in the present moment. Watch the breath coming in, watch the breath going out. And breathe in a way that compensates for the leaning. If you're irritated about something, try to breathe in a way that soothes the nerve endings, all the way down to the little tips of the toes, tips of the fingers. You can breathe in a way that gives a sense of refreshment. And this breath is medicine. It's like a cream that you put on a rash. You don't put the cream on the rash and then wipe it off. You put it on and you let it stay there. And it gradually seeps into the skin and can do, it work, do its work. In the same way, as you stay with the breath and the breath feels good, it seeps into the mind. It gradually loosens up its irritation, it soothes the irritation. This is using feelings as a way of fabricating your mind states. If the mind is already kind of lazy and sluggish, then you want to breathe in a way that's more interesting, more energizing. Or think about things that make you interested or energized. Think about the example of the Kubajans. They're out in the forest. And day in, day out, it was the same thing, forest, 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 all that around. Yet they were able to find some ways of making sure there was some variety, and so they didn't get just sluggish into their old routine. They tell the story of a John Chaw, where he would go, he would always make sure he had at least two walking meditation paths. So it wasn't stuck, he wasn't stuck in the same path day in, day out, day in, day out, all day long. He would switch paths. Other monks, when they found that they were getting a little bit too stir crazy, would just see a mountain nearby and go climb the mountain and climb back down. In other words, find some variety. You can either find some variety outside or some, find some variety inside. You don't have to focus on the breath all the time. There are other topics you can think about. Think about the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. Think about your own generosity, your own virtue. Think about the devas, the qualities that make a person a deva, and look at the qualities you have been developing in your mind, and ask yourself where you're still lacking. There's conviction, conviction that your actions really are important, so you can be very careful about what you do. There's virtue, learning. You can memorize some dhamma. Generosity, what can you do to give of your time in a way you haven't ordinarily done? And discernment, making up your mind that you're really going to be on top of things as they arise and pass away in the mind. So catch the slightest signs that greed is going to come, or anger is going to come, irritation is going to come, sadness is going to come. And you'll learn how to step out of these things. Otherwise the mind just travels in the same old ruts over and over and over again. Look at the train in a train set. It may have a couple of switches, but not much. It just goes around and around and around. So get your mind out of the ruts. If nothing else, go and sit and meditate someplace you haven't meditated before. This can stir the mind out of its sluggishness. Because it's important that you learn how to read your mind and bring the mind into balance. Because if you don't look after your mind, who's going to look after your mind? And if, you don't, if you're unable to step out of your moods, you're just going to become a slave to them. So learn how to step out, look around, bring things into balance. And your meditation is sure to regress.